First thing I found was Hank Williams, who is the quintessential singer-songwriter. I try so hard, my dear, to show that you were my every dream. Yet you're afraid each thing. The most amazing songs, just, just uh, what everybody would aspire to. And of course, he uh, died. I think 29. I think when he was 29, very young. Uh, a bit of a tragic death in the back of a car. But uh, I think he's what everybody aspires to. Leonard Cohen says in Tower of Song, uh, Hank Williams is 30 floors above me or something. You know, he's, he's just a, an amazing writer. And there's nothing complicated about it. But that's, that's the hardest thing to do. If you can say, I love you in a song, and people will think, wow, like they've never heard it before. That's the, the, the nub of Hank Williams. I'm going to talk, I'm at nepotism now, I'm going to talk about my friend Nick Drake. Uh, I'm sure lots of people pick Nick. Uh, we were great friends when we were all young in London in the 60s. And uh, when he made these records, uh, they just sounded extraordinary. And the thing is, I think more, more than anyone, almost anyone of his generation of the British people, they still sound so new, they sound as if they were recorded yesterday. Who can know the thoughts of Mary Jane? Why she flies or goes out in the rain? You know, we just sort of thought he was a bit crazy, but in those days you didn't do an intervention or anything. And he was a, he, he went all Howard Hughes with the long nails and the not washing his face or combing his hair and all that. But uh, nobody kind of took enough notice, I think. And uh, he died very sadly on overdose of pills, which <clears throat> might have been accidental, who knows. Or, but uh, he's a great, great guitar player, great, a great singer. I know it's a very weak sort of voice, but it's so heartfelt. And uh, yeah, I, I love Nick. Yeah, he'd be very old now, just like me. <laughs> So let's get rid of it. Well, these people are all old. Nick, Hank Williams, who's next? Oh, this, this is someone even older. I'm very big on Eric Satie music at the moment. His famous gymnopedie, I don't even know how to pronounce it. But uh, I love Satie because he, French music apart from Debussy and Satie I, and Ravel, I'm not so crazy about. But he was something very unusual. The, the, the music is very strange, very uplifting. He was an eccentric. He didn't change his sheets on the bed for 40 years, but he wore a clean white shirt every day and, and he'd throw it in the corner the next day. So he had like 17,000 shirts all piled up. And I love an eccentric. And I think, um, I think French music's not so good these days. You might be able to disabuse me of that notion, but uh, certainly around this time, Satie's uh, particular period, this is a great record. So we're in LA. I thought, thought I should pick a, a Los Angelino. Then why must any of the children die? So we asked the Lord, and the Lord said, man means nothing, he means less to me. I like him because he's like, he's grumpy. And he's not just a grumpy old man, he's always been grumpy. And people say I'm sort of doomy and gloomy when I write. Here's the master. I love him. Oh, God, all these handsome people. This is Tim Buckley. Um, and I shared a, a flat, an apartment with him briefly when he moved to London. And this is live in London 68. So I guess we shared the apartment uh, about then, uh, a bunch of us. Um, but he was very handsome and a fantastic singer songwriter again, who died tragically young. Oh, it's a happy time inside my mind when I 
Melody does find a rhyme and says to me I'm coming home to stay. Yeah, I never, I didn't talk to him that much. He was very sweet and we'd chat, but he was intimidating because he was six foot tall and he was like a pipe cleaner, you know, and with this fuzzy hair. He was very otherworldly, I thought. And of course, unbeknownst to me, uh, he was on heroin. And I, I mean, I knew loads of people on heroin at that time, but I, I never noticed, I don't know. I, I guess they, they, you know, they didn't shoot up in front of me, but anyway. Uh, yeah, that was sad and so incredibly sad that, uh, that his son died so young, too. And, and if anything, Jeff was a better singer than Tim. See if I can find something happy. Not a chance, I'm telling you. <laughs> Okay, um, I'm very into Charlie Patton at the moment. I mean, I know the, um, the most, or probably the most revered of the blues men is Robert Johnson, but Charlie Patton, no, jo Robert Johnson revered Charlie Patton, I'm sorry. Did bad did women go and feed every day they lie about? Will you kill a man? Charlie Patton always used to say, Robert Johnson, best harmonica player I ever heard. And if that isn't damning somebody with faint praise, I don't know what is. If you've never heard Charlie Patton, if you want to uh, get into uh, blues music, uh, I'm sure you don't because you're already terribly knowledgeable. But this is a great, he is a great guy to start with. Fantastic. Okay. Thank you so much for talking oh, with us. Oh, thank you. And I'm sorry I was a bit nerve wracked. You are so sweet, you guys. Now I've got to get a bloody cab. Dressed up in green velvet. Yes. Amoeba!